quick tornado story. So a few years back, my friend Carson and I were just hanging out and we're talking about tornadoes because he's really into tornadoes as well. We're talking about all the tornado topics, Moore, Joplin, Andover, James Spann. Suddenly he goes, yo, how crazy is that dead man walking photo from the 1997 Gerald F5 tornado? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm, what? He's like, dude, you haven't seen it? And I'm like, no. So he pulls up the photo on his phone and he shows me this terrifying photo of a tornado that looks like a monster walking across a field. These two inner vortices representing legs and this horizontal vortice representing a Skype-like arm. Truly terrifying. Now Carson specifically said that this was a still photo from a home video. And it does kind of have that grainy video look to it, that VHS look to it. And I was like, okay, well, I want to actually see if it's like walking like does it actually show a walking like motion in the video I mean I had so many questions so later that night I tried to look it up I tried to search for the dead man walking tornado video and I went down a major rabbit hole so that's what we're talking about today we're gonna go over one of the most infamous tornado photos of all time is this truly a still taken from a video who took the photo slash video where was this photo slash video taken and we'll also talk about other famous dead man walking tornado videos, including Joplin, El Reno, Coleman, and Xenia. But before we do that, be sure to subscribe for more tornado content and other weather phenomena here at Soil Studios. Let's get into the video. Okay, first things first though, we should probably talk about the 1997 Gerald tornado event as a whole, because it's actually a pretty unique tornado event. Early in the morning on May 27, 1997, the Storm Prediction Center issued a moderate risk for severe weather over central and eastern Texas. However, the main concern at the time was hail and wind, not tornadoes. This was mostly due to low wind shear in the region. However, very unique conditions involving the positions of a dry line, cold front, gravity wave, as well as high humidity helped to create a highly unstable atmosphere, which in turn led to the creation of several supercells and tornadoes. The Storm Prediction Center issued a tornado watch for eastern Texas at 12.39 p.m. And then at 3.25 in the afternoon, a small rope tornado began to drop down just west of I-35 near the town of Gerald. The unique atmospheric conditions of the supercell allowed it to be easily visible due to both a clear atmosphere and its slow-moving nature. Most tornadoes move at speeds of 20 miles per hour, however this tornado was only going 5 to 10 miles per hour. Due to the high visibility, many motorists on I-35 actually pulled over at a rest stop to watch this thin rope tornado slowly make its way to the southwest. One person at the rest stop was Scott Guest from KVU. Scott captured some amazing footage of the early rope stages of the tornado. As the tornado got closer to Gerald, it briefly weakened, but then rapidly strengthened into a large wedge. You can clearly see how quickly it strengthened by looking at Scott Guest's footage from the rest stop. One moment it's a thin rope, and the next he's filming this massive, large wedge tornado. It was around this transitional period where the dead man walking photo was captured. At this point, the tornado was at peak intensity and it barely dodged the main section of Gerald. However, it would unfortunately directly hit the subdivision of Double Creek Estates around 348. It was here that the tornado claimed 27 lives and caused some of the most intense damage ever seen by a tornado. Do you want to know what F5 damage looks like? It looks like Gerald. Well-built homes completely swept off their foundations. Deep trenches were dug into the grass. Truly insane damage. Many believe Gerald had wind speeds close to 300 miles per hour, while others claimed the wind speeds were around 260 and that the intense damage was caused by the tornado's slow movement. So let's go back to the photo real quick. This was taken right before it went into Double Creek Estates. So this was literally the moment before 27 people would lose their lives, which really just adds to the terrifying nature of the photo. But where did this myth and legend start? Where did it begin? Well, the origins of this specific photo being called the Dead Man Walking Tornado Photo can be traced to a Channel 5 documentary that aired on TLC back in 1999. About a third of the way through the documentary, they showed this clip. An ancient Native American legend speaks of the dead man walking. Perfection is offering 0% financing for 12 months on carrier systems. Plus, save with carrier cool cash rebates on qualified systems. Contact Perfection today to schedule. If you see him in a tornado, you are about to die. The townsfolk of Gerald can now see the arms and legs of a multi-vortex tornado approaching. The dead man has 
has just walked into Gerald. If you see the dead man walking, you are about to die. Wow, pretty terrifying. But is it even true? Is this an actual Native American legend? Well, actually, yes. I've had several Native American commenters on previous videos talk about how their grandmother or grandfather would tell them the dead man walking tornado legend. So this is indeed a story that has been retold and passed down for several generations. I do plan on doing a Native American history of tornadoes video, just FYI, so do subscribe. So what actually causes it to look like a man slash monster walking? This illusion is caused by the strange, shape-shifting nature of a multi-vortex tornado. A multi-vortex tornado is a rare type of tornado that contains several powerful sub-vortices, aka suction vortices, within the main tornado itself. Our brain is very good at personifying different shapes, so sometimes these multi-vortex tornadoes can actually appear human to us. Now, usually only the most powerful EF4 and EF5 tornadoes are multi-vortex, so the legend of if you see a dead man walk you are about to die is actually kind of based on truth because if you're in that close of a proximity to an EF4 or EF5 tornado, you're in a really dangerous situation. So where did this photo slash video come from? Well, of course, I started off by looking for the footage on YouTube. The first video that pops up when you search Dead Man Walking Tornado footage on YouTube is the Dead Man Walking Tornado documentary that we spoke of earlier. And I watched the entire documentary for a video version of the photo only to come up empty. However, I did notice that during the actual Dead Man Walking sequence, there are other stills from the exact location. You can tell by the trees and stuff, see how it's the same trees in these different photos. So there's no video, however, we do have multiple images at this point. So what else pops up? Well, below the documentary is a video uploaded by Angel Escobales Jr. titled Dead Man Walking Home Video. So I'm thinking, yes, here it is. However, if you watch the video, which was featured in Storm Warning Episode 7, it's definitely a different location from the actual photo. I mean, there's like no trees in this video. I did notice that one commenter stated, you can see the Dead Man Walking multi-vortex tornado at 145 and 152. I doubt we'll ever have more info on the original Dead Man Walking picture, but those couple of frames in this video prove that Gerald was indeed a multi-vortex tornado. So if we go to 145, you can see that this definitely correlates with this specific image from the documentary. And if we go to 152, you can actually see the Dead Man Walking figure's legs very clearly. And it's pretty far away, but you can still see the two legs. There is no sign of the Skype arm, however. At this point, I really wanted to find the original video, so I put my nose to the grindstone and I started searching high and low for the footage, looking through forums, videos, credits. I even joined the local Gerald Facebook group looking for answers. On one forum, I read this. I saw the actual video. You clearly could see this in the video, and perhaps is the most disturbing one I have seen due to what it looks like. No, I do not believe it is a dead man walking, but the impression sticks with you. Try to find and view this yourself. One person from another forum actually claimed to have taken the Dead Man Walking video. However, I'm a little suspicious. I even hopped on the Google Earth trying to find the exact location of the photo by using the tree positions and the fence. My efforts would prove to be unsuccessful. At one point, I had given up hope until I came across a specific forum on Stormstalker. John asks the question, was there a documentary that aired on TLC a while back that featured a video of the vortex breakdown, the transition from rope to wedge, and the so-called dead man walking, where the suction vortices are clearly visible? If so, is it available anywhere? Of course, he's talking about the TLC documentary that we were talking about earlier, but one reply was pretty interesting below. Michael stated, I don't know of any video, but the original Time Magazine article on the Gerald Tornado has a photo of it. It was taken by Scott Beckwith. I still have the original magazine article. And of course, I found the exact Time Magazine article. The article comes from the June 9th, 1997 issue and is found on page 34. The article is titled Nowhere to Run and it was written by Belinda Luscombe. The article goes over the Gerald Tornado and the tragedy of Double Creek Estates. But if you look on the side, you can see the dead man walking photo. And below it says, photos courtesy of Scott Beckwith. Finally, we have a name. Scott Beckwith was the man who took the photo. Scott Beckwith's photos are shown in the margins in chronological order with the caption, Funnel of Death, and photographs taken over eight minutes. The tornado at first appeared thin, 
but then it gathered strength and seemed to grow at least and triplicate until it became the monster that destroyed Gerald, Texas. So the case has been solved. We now know that the infamous dead man walking photo is just one photograph that's part of a larger tornado photograph sequence. It is very interesting to look at the development of the tornado from Scott's perspective. The tornado appears to be heading straight toward him as it stays in the same general spot on the horizon. I wanted to figure out exactly where his location was, so I was able to go online and I found out that he took the photos as an employee at the Gerald Farm Supply. Gerald Farm Supply is now out of business, but I was able to locate the address on Google. I hopped on the Google Maps to see if any of the trees or the fence were the same from 1997. The first thing I noticed is that the original Gerald Farm Supply building is completely gone. However, I used the old time machine technique and I was able to confirm that this was indeed the correct position. I surveyed up and down the road trying to find the exact spot. I noticed that there was this little metal fence thingy in the photographs, so using that I was able to find the spot where the photos were taken. And yeah, the landscape does appear to look very similar. Now, the last photo in the sequence shows the tornado at its most violent point but you'll notice that the foreground is completely different. Well, that's because the tornado actually crossed in front of Scott slightly to the left and ended up in this position, which tragically correlates over the exact spot of Double Creek Estates. What happened to Frank? He was chowing down on a hot dog, and next thing I know, he's passed out, ass up in a sandbar. I wanted to know more about Scott Beckwith and his famous photograph sequence, and I came across this book, Gerald, by Mary H. Hodge and Priscilla S. King. I purchased the book, and it was very interesting. You should check it out if you want to know more about the event and the town of Gerald. I purchased this book because it goes more in-depth with the Scott Beckwith photo sequence. In fact, there are several of his photos that I had never seen before. He was even able to capture a moment when the condensation funnel completely disappeared between the robe stage and the multi-vortex stage. Look at this amazing photo. Scott Beckwith was even able to capture photos of the insane damage that occurred at Double Creek Estates. So much about the 1997 Gerald, Texas tornado is unique. The slow speed, the opposite direction it traveled from most tornadoes, the fact that it was so insanely powerful, just the weird conditions in general. And that's why footage of this tornado is so important. It truly was a strange meteorological event the more knowledge we have about it, like footage, the better we can predict something similar happening in the future. Angel Escobales Jr. has done an exceptional job trying to piece together the 1997 Gerald Tornado, and I highly recommend you check out the channel. One video is completely dedicated to finding the missing Gerald tapes. The conditions were perfect for filming this, so it's likely that many people have home videos of this and are just sitting on them or they're buried somewhere. So if you have footage of this, be sure to upload it to YouTube, send me a link, or send me the video, or send Angel the video. The dead man walking tornado phenomena isn't unique to Gerald. There are several other prominent examples with other tornadoes. This footage was captured during the Joplin F5 tornado that occurred on May 22nd, 2011. These vortices look like huge monster legs walking into Joplin. Another prominent example is from the 2011 Coleman F5 tornado that happened only a few weeks earlier on April 27th. There are several moments during this video that show a walking-like motion. This dead man walking gif was captured during the 2013 El Reno tornado, and there are several photographs of the 1974 Xena F5 tornado that show leg-like features. So that's the story of the dead man walking tornado. This really is a real life monster, and that's what's so intriguing to me. People love to talk about made up monsters and scary fairy tales and strange lore, but this is real and it's terrifying. So if you see the dead man walking, go to the lowest level of your house in the most interior room. For real. Thanks for watching.